Aloha, I'm Bob, and welcome to Between the Sheets, where we look at Microsoft Excel and related technologies. If I were stranded on a desert island and could take only nine Excel shortcuts with me, the ones in this video are what I would bring on the three-hour tour that got me there. And in this video, I will show you the Windows and Mac equivalents. So let's take a look and see how it works. Number one, what do most people do to see the formulas on a worksheet? Well, they'll do something like this. Click over here, look at a formula, hit the down arrow, look at the next formula, hit the down arrow, look at the next formula. Well, that's tedious. And if you're trying to debug a worksheet, it makes the process take too long. Wouldn't it be great if you could see all the formulas at once? Well, on your keyboard, you see the key that has an accent mark and a tilde it's just above the tab key. So in both the Windows and Mac editions, you want to press Control and that tilde accent mark key. And hey, check that out. And when I scroll to the right, it always jumps a little bit. So we can see all of the formulas. We can see everything is incremented. And when you click a formula, you notice that Excel selects the cells that feed into that formula. So that's with any of these that you click you can see exactly what's feeding into it. Now, if you want to get the screen back to normal again, it's the same shortcut. Control, accent mark, tilde key, and it comes right back. Yes, there is a way to do this on the ribbon bar if you don't want to use the shortcut. Go to the Formulas tab on the ribbon bar, and you see over here it says Show Formulas. You may or may not have the label, but if you click it, that does the same thing. You notice it's highlighted. Click it again, and it removes it. Number two. If you want to break a line in a cell, you can't just press the Enter key because that's going to update the cell contents. At this point in your life, I'm sure you know that. So let me scroll down here a little bit. What you want to do is, let's say I want to put a line break in both of these cells here. I'm just going to double click. And on the Windows version, I'm going to press Alt Enter. On the Mac, I press Option Enter. And now I hit Enter to update. And there we go. And I'll double click this cell. I'll put the cursor right before the B in both. And again, hold the Alt key down on Windows or the Option key down on the Mac, and that breaks the line. And then you can press Enter. Now, there is sort of a way to do this on the ribbon bar, but not exactly. If you go to the Home tab, you notice there's this button here to wrap text. The shortcut that I showed you is better than using that wrap text button because you have full control of exactly where the line will break. With the wrap text button, the, the line break won't necessarily go where you want it. Now let's go down here a little bit. Number three. Here's a cell. We have a complicated formula, and you can see it has that value. I'm just going to go into the cell right below it. If I press Control apostrophe, call it an apostrophe or single quotation mark, Control single quotation mark in Windows or Command single quotation mark on the Mac, that is going to copy the formula into that cell. You notice it's not formatted exactly the same because there's a little bit of rounding, format rounding, so I could click that and remove a couple of the decimals if I want. But really, I copied that formula that was there. And by the way, that shortcut isn't just for formulas or numbers. It could be for text. So if I go into this cell and I press Control apostrophe, it's going to copy that text as well. I'll just undo that. Now, if you want to copy the value of the cell, not the formula, let's go here and I'm going to delete that. Then what you do is press Control Shift double quotation mark. And this is the same in both Windows and Mac. And don't get confused because this is kind of weird. In Windows, the shortcut to copy the formula of, or the value uses the Control key for both. But on the Mac, one uses Command key. The other uses the control key. I know this is confusing. So I'm in Windows. I'm going to press Control Shift, double quotation mark, Enter. And now you notice, if you look up here in the formula bar, that is the value that I copied from above, not the formula that I copied from above. Number four. OK, one more time, I'm going to remove that. And let's go back onto that cell, onto that calculation. Now, you may know that if you want to convert a range of cells from formulas to their values. You could copy the cells, then 
paste the values. But what if you only want to convert just one cell? You could do it a little easier than copying and pasting. Here's the deal. Pressing the F2 key is like double-clicking a cell, right? If you double-click a cell, you get into entering. I'll just escape out. So all that does is it puts the cursor inside for editing. You also may know that pressing the F9 key forces a worksheet to recalculate. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to press F2 and F9, both of those shortcuts, in order. So I'm on that cell, and I'm going to press F2, F9, and boom, you see that changes the formula to the actual value. Now, a couple other things to be aware of here. If you were using a full-size external keyboard, it's just the F2 key and the F9 key. If you're using a Windows laptop, you may also need to hold down the function key and press function F2 and function F9. Usually, it will vary a little bit from one Windows laptop to another. If you're doing this on a MacBook, you definitely need to hold the function key down with the other two keys. Number five. There are times when you need to select two or more ranges of cells that aren't contiguous. For example, if you want to create a pie chart, you need to select over here, let's say, product names and also totals, like that. So to do that, you just hold down the control key in Windows, or if you're on the Mac, hold down the command key when you select. It's the same thing like, for example, if you want to select multiple columns. You could click a column header and then hold down the control key to select individual other columns. Or if you're on the Mac, you would hold down the command key to do that. Number six. One thing that is not on the ribbon and is only available with shortcuts is selecting cells for auditing. I'll go up here to the formulas tab. You might be familiar with the items here, trace precedence and trace dependence, that will display arrows to point out precedent and dependent cells. But if you don't want all those arrows and you just want to select formulas that are dependents of an input cell or you want to select input cells that are precedents of formulas, here's what you can do. I'm going to go up here. I'm selected in January apples, so that's group one. And I want to see the formulas that it feeds into directly. I'm going to press in Windows, I press Control right square bracket. And that's the same on the Mac. On the Mac, it is also the control key, not the command key. So I'm going to click to deselect. And if I want to select direct and indirect dependence, I'm going to press Control shift right curly brace. And you can kind of think of it as Control shift right square bracket, if that's easier. And notice what happens here. Let me scroll a little bit is this is selecting not just the direct dependence, not just the formulas it feeds into directly, but I'll scroll down here. It also feeds into the indirect dependence. So the immediate cells that it feeds into, and then the cells that those formulas feed into. Now we'll go in the reverse direction. Let me scroll up here a little bit. And I'm going to click a formula, let's say, over here, and I want to see this formula's direct precedence. In either Windows or Mac, I'm going to press Control left square bracket, where I could click on this formula here and see the direct precedence. Windows or Mac, press Control left square bracket. And kind of like before, I'll scroll down here, and here's totals for both groups. I'm going to click on this one, and Windows or Mac, if I press Control shift left curly brace, that selects direct and indirect precedence for that particular formula. Or I'll go over here and press Control shift left curly brace, and that selects direct and indirect precedence of that formula. And kind of like before, if you find that easier to think of as Control shift left square bracket, that's totally fine. Number seven. Selecting all might seem like a very basic, simple thing, but it works a little differently in Excel than in other applications. So you see I'm clicked right there in the middle of this data, and when I press Control-A in Windows or Command-A on the Mac, you notice it selects all the cells in this 
contiguous area, and it stops where it's bounded by blank rows and blank columns. This is, FYI, what Excel macro programming calls the current region. Now, if I press Control A or Command A a second time, now it selects all the cells on the entire worksheet. Now, if I click off over to the right, and I'm in a blank cell that's completely surrounded by blank cells, now if I press Control A or Command A, it immediately selects all the cells on the worksheet because there is no current region. There's just no data there. Number eight. Now, of course, you can format cells on the ribbon bar, and when you're on the Home tab, you have all these formatting options. Also notice that in the Font Alignment and Number sections, you've got these little pointed arrows there in the corner, and those will bring you to the Format Cells dialog box. You could also, if you're in Windows, press Control-1, or on the Mac, press Command-1, and that will also bring you to the Format Cells dialog box. And that's especially helpful maybe if you're not on the Home tab, if you're on one of the other tabs and don't want to go back there, Control-1 or Command-1 will immediately get you there. And the Format Cells dialog box, because I was in a number, this gives me different number formatting that I can choose. And there's also tabs for alignment and font and some of these others. And just keep in mind, that's Control or Command 1, not the F1 function key. Number nine, tables are a great feature. And since the word table begins with the letter T, you can press in Windows Control T or on the Mac Command T to immediately turn your selection into a table. My table does have headers, so I'm going to choose that, click OK, boom, and this is now a table. And brings me to the Table Design tab on the ribbon bar as though I created the table using a mouse feature. I'm going to undo that for a moment. That is the same thing as if you're on the Home tab and somewhere in the middle, we have Format as Table, and you chose one of those options there. So Control-T or Command-T will turn your data set into a table. Are there other Excel shortcuts you have on your desert island list? Let me know in the comments. So until next time, my name is Bob, and this has been Between the Sheets.